Welcome back to rheumatoidsolutions.com. My name's Clint Patterson, and today I've got a fabulous guest. She's been on the podcast uh, some years ago, actually, um, and she is back today to talk about something totally different. Today, we are going to hear about how we can recreate our own reality and how we're all powerful enough to do this with our minds and how we can become more conscious. She's written a book called Bridging Science and Spirit. It's Dr. Nisha Manik. Back, welcome. Thank you for joining me hey. again. Good to see you, Clint, and happy Sunday to you from California. It's quiet out here, raining in Santa Cruz, but it's so delightful to see you again. Uh, you too, absolutely. Um, we uh, we always enjoy chatting to each other privately, mm-hmm. and we decided to put this podcast together because I'm reading your book at the moment, and mm-hmm. I'm finding it very fascinating. And I just wanted to. Um, invite you and and have you be able to share this really, really important topic, something that I love. I love talking about the power of the mind. I've been into this my whole life. My dad always told me, you know, if you visualize what you want in your life, then you can achieve it. And whilst I hadn't had any science on this and so forth, my dad's so passionate about this. I've been thinking about it my whole life. And we're going to talk about it more. And you've dove straight into the physics behind it, which is just Absolutely. so fascinating. So you, now, you know, for, for our listeners who haven't listened to your uh, episode in the past, and, and uh, you're a rheumatologist. You treat people with rheumatoid arthritis, sciatic arthritis, lupus, and all of the conditions that I cover on this, on this show. Why did you sort of find this passion to explore the mind? Yeah. yeah. Great question, Clint. You know, I'm a very much a conventional scientist. And, um, you know, I must say your dad was on the right track. And in a sense, when I grew up in Kenya, I knew that there was much more to us. It was my family uh, surrounding an environment is very grounded in spirituality. Really, I grew up in a household like that. And, uh, you know, when my father passed, when I was very young, about eight years old, I decided to find the truth. I decided that I was going to find the truth behind life. And I never changed my mind. And the way to find truth in our world is through science, through the scientific endeavors, the questions, the protocols. And so I left Kenya when I was about 16 or 17, and I went to actually Ohio at Case Western Reserve. I did, uh, I was a chemistry major. Long story short, then I went to medical school at Glasgow University in Scotland. And I trained in internal medicine in London. And I'm a fellow of the Royal College of Physicians and a fellow of the American College of Physicians. Now, I say all of this because for me, science is my heartbeat in a sense. You know, I I really pay attention to my body, my uh, hygiene, my vaccinations, all of those things play a role in how I approach my daily life. So I wear my seatbelt. I always put that as an example. I take my vitamin D. So science is very much uh, an important part of our knowledge and understanding of ourselves. So here I am at Stanford University. I did my fellowship in rheumatology there. And I went to Mayo Clinic in Minnesota, from Stanford to Minnesota in a very robust conventional clinical environment, excellent care, you know, and here I was doing the top-notch conventional care, but there is a gap. There is a gap. What I was doing every day was chemical medicine, right? I look at blood test results. I look at the biochemistry of people. I look at that information and then advise my patients, but there was a stubborn gap not everybody got better, despite the best of the biologicals, the best of mm-hmm. analysis, the best minds together. Here we have a stubborn gap. So why is that? And so I'm going to read a little section of my book. I wrote a letter to myself, okay? Um, Congratulations, Nisha, member of the graduating class of 1991, Descartes would be proud of you. 
Yes, he would, for he may have been a philosopher and all that, but he said the preservation of health has always been the principal end of my studies. To that end, the Cartesian agenda to promote rationalism has been magnificently carried out in medicine. What do I mean by that Cartesian agenda? We in medicine have formed a randomized control trial to find things that work and things that don't. But from this immense agenda has come so much data based on just chemistry. But we know that's not enough. And so in my book, I also spell out the problems. And I'm going to read that little section too. You'll be seeing an excessive need for certainty with randomized controlled data. You'll see physician burnout. And you will see suicide rates rising amongst your peers. These are problems few people actually talk about, okay? Many hospitals now have chief wellness officers to address fatigue and the problems of physician burnout. So medicine grapples with its problems incrementally, forever tinkering with incentives, EHRs, and all of that. So I looked at this problem at the Mayo Clinic and I saw that, that we are just doing biochemistry, but we have a much larger issue on hand, things that we don't look at. We don't look at the energetic pathways of the human body system. We are made of information, energy, and consciousness. But how do we get there? How do we get there? And so in Mayo, I made that sort of jump in my thought system. And it actually came through a book chapter called uh, Around the, around the, I should say, Science of Qigong. Qigong is a energy medicine practice, okay? Tai Chi, Qigong, yoga are in that umbrella. So I was invited to write a book chapter for the Mayo Clinic textbook of complementary therapies. And Dr. Bauer, who's the editor, said, you write on Qigong. You seem to be so enthusiastic about it. I was, and there'd been no um, serious look at the data until then. It was in 2006. So here I am looking at the data for Qigong. And uh, uh, along the same time, I was looking at National Institute of Health data for complementary medical therapies and physician attitudes. Because we know if you look at Americans, one out of three use some form of complementary medicine. And it's rheumatic diseases that lead the way. Back pain, neck pain, uh, gout, fibromyalgia, rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic, lupus, they all look to complementary therapies. They want to find out how they can help themselves beyond complementary therapies. So this is really fascinating that rheumatology is leading the way. And yet, what were the physician attitudes? Okay, so I looked at the data. So there were 600 rheumatologists who were invited to answer the questions, a short questionnaire and 600 people were invited, and 58% replied to this questionnaire. So, the, you know, with these kinds of surveys, 58% is a very healthy number, yeah. actually. And, and this was the surprising fact, Clint, if I can summarize the results. My colleagues in rheumatology love complementary therapies. Actually, they do recommend massage. They do recommend glucosamine. They do tell their patients about how to take care of gout using you know, good nutritional ideas. These are very sensible. But there was one outlier, one outlier where my colleagues do not believe in it and wouldn't recommend it, and that was energy medicine. So if you look at massage, where more than 60 to 70% of my colleagues were saying, yeah, we believe in it, we would recommend it. Yep. We know we don't understand glucosamine, but I think it's worth a try. Energy medicine, less than 
It was such a stark difference. And I thought, whoa, wait a second here. So why is that? Why doesn't energy medicine have the respect? And yet I was investigating it with the book chapter. And I can tell you, Qigong in 2006 had pretty robust evidence. Okay, it had help in asthma, help in children's learning, help in sleep, help in digestion. I, there was this, this sort of uh, mismatch, you know. And I think one of the uh, issues about the mismatch is that we're not educated about energy in medicine. Mm. Physicians do not have a framework to understand energy medicine. When we talk energy, we talk about calories, what you eat, but that's not just the energy. You know, energy is much, much more. And that's when I realized physics, physics has the knowledge about energy and it, it's about thermodynamics. Okay. So, so here I am. <laughs> And, and I know I'm, I'm talking a lot, but you can always interrupt me, St Clint, okay? Yeah, let me just recap what you've said so far, and then I can yes. guide listeners as to where we're going here as well. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm sure they're finding this really fascinating, and, and, and I just want to let everyone know where we're heading. We are heading to some really practical, implementable information here that you can put yes. into you, your lives immediately so that mm -hmm. you can start to use the energy that you have just been talking about to be mm -hmm. able to benefit your own life, not just if you have a rheumatic disease, but if you just want to have a more happiness and just be able to create a better life for yourself um, in the right. way my dad talked about with picturing uh, uh, outcomes and so forth. And we're going to get there uh, quite shortly um, because we're about to get into um, you meeting one of the most incredible physicians of our time and how he uh, through studying his work, helped guide you in, and, 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 and influenced much of the information that you put in your book. And then we're going to talk about these implementable tools. So that's where yes. we go. And right. I understand from what you've described so far that you wanted to understand this, this energy aspect of our health from a point of view of not just physicians' health, because you were seeing that physicians were having mental issues and suicidal thoughts and 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 yes. and depression problems but also in your upbringing you had this as part of your life and now it seems to be missing from your profession so you had it from both your personal and from your colleagues viewpoint and then when you found that qigong which is a form of of uh, uh exercise energy movement that my friend joel osborne does every single day so i'm very familiar with what yes. what he was in he doesn't miss a day. If he's traveling like a long international flight, he'll do it in the bathroom at the airport before he gets on the plane. He never misses a day. Um, Absolutely. Okay. And so you've seen the impact on patients through looking at the scientific evidence as a review. And so you know that it's, it's important to you, it's important to your colleagues, and it's important to your patients. And so that's Absolutely. where we're up to, and this is where we're going. So, yeah. So here I am, I'm researching Qigong and energy. And you know, Clint, I remember in medical school, we do anatomy. We dissect the, the body to find out about its structure. It's, it's a very fundamental knowledge in the doctor's mindset and toolkit. There's no energy highways or pathways. But, so it doesn't exist in our anat anatomy, but it doesn't mean it's not there. And so do you see, we already had a mindset, unless you see it, it's there. So that's the first issue. So I'm reading, I stumble into William Tiller's work. He calls energy subtle energies. And I think the word subtle got my attention because when I do Tai Chi, you're right, you feel something and it's there. It's very powerful and it's connected to your intention. You intend to do this practice. So here is William Tiller, who's published a lot of papers, physicist at Stanford University, very well known. He's a material scientist and physicist, and he has an expertise in crystals. He's still around. He is 90 years old now. And so when I stumbled into his work and read his papers, I couldn't understand them. Yeah. Full of equations and you know terms I couldn't get my head around. 
but I knew there's a gift here. I need to to go here. And I wrote to him. So, you know, he didn't um, he didn't reply to me. Um, Finally, I meet him in Arizona. He's retired in Scottsdale. And um, I realized that this is somebody who is my mentor. He, he really balances both ends. He's a tremendous physicist. He knows the mathematical knowledge. And he's also somebody who's inner developed. And I, I'll say why. One of his experiments in the 1970s was very unusual. And he did this in parallel with conventional science. He realized that humans are much, much more than just chemistry, this atom and molecules bag of things. You know, we're, we're not just a sack of chemical uh, impulses. And, you know, we're, we're, we're this intention. Where does this fit in into the great scheme of science? And so he did something very interesting in Stanford. He created... Um, a gas discharge mechanism. What, what this is, is that two glass plates and sandwiched between them is a gas, okay? Carbon dioxide, xenon, and others. And what, what you have to do with the gas discharge is connect it to a battery, put enough energy in it so you release an electron which bangs into another electron and you soon enough you have an avalanche of electrons. It's like a neon light. Okay, so he said, okay, rather than putting electricity, can my intention, my subtle energy, have enough input to to do this neon light without touching the device? So here you have a very delicate device. He stands with his uh, hands over it. He's not touching it, maybe about six inches from it. And closes his eyes and intends it. He visualizes that this thing was going to light up. And guess what? He was doing it every single time. And he tried this not only with himself, but with healers, with Stanford students, with all age groups, old, young, everybody can do this. They can make this guest discharge start chattering away without touching it. Immense finding. This is in the early 70s. Can you believe this? So he was doing something really weird. (laughs) But basically what he's showing is this. Human intention has the power to change something without physically touching it. You and I, with our intention, has enough subtle energy to change something out there. Okay, and it's not a natural force. It's not like gravity. It's not nuclear forces, and it's not electromagnetic. Okay, electromagnetic. He didn't put electricity. Okay, that's electromagnetic. So subtle energies. You know, the word subtle can be confusing because we think it's weak, but it's not. Mm -hmm. Subtle means it's very hard to detect with our instruments. We don't yet have the scientific instruments to readily detect it. That's why medicine can't see it. But it's there. But it's there. Okay? When you do Qigong, oh, yeah, you can feel it. I When I first did Qigong, my mind was blown up. I mean, you know, I go from Rochester, Minnesota to Minneapolis. I have a very good friend, Master Chun Yi Lin, of Spring Forest Qigong Center, and here I'm doing Qigong level one. And immediately within five minutes, I could, I swore I could press a ball between my hands. I could intend that energy to go somewhere, okay? It was like a play. For me, I don't have any illnesses, but it was tremendously energizing. And this was an inside out, not outside in. in you know, in medicine, yeah. we think of outside. We get the body, we try to fix it with chemical stuff. It's okay, it's, it has its place. But Qigong was an inside out. Your acupuncture system is called into play. That's your energy pump. That's thermodynamics in action. And we'll come back to the tools, but I'll just stop here because Clint, I want you to have a chance to give me some reflections. 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, the piece that you just mentioned about uh, the influencing the gas chamber uh, was mm. was is where I'm up to in your book. And I just put the book down. And uh, again, I'm relaying several of the pa- parts of your book to my wife because, you know, I have a science background. I did laser yes. physics at university. So oh. I find this stuff like soup and I nerd out on this stuff. Like it's my favorite stuff. And because I've thought about other things for a very long time, um, you know, it's so, it feels like coming home. It feels so nice mm-hmm. to read about these, you know, you, in the book, you cover his, historical, um, influences of our, of our, you know, his, history, um, you know, and we won't touch upon all them now for lack of time, but, you know, you talk about the, the influences and, and the challenges they faced and so forth. It's just really, really fascinating. But when it got to that point in the book, when you relay this experiment that you just told us, uh, you know, it just confirms that what we all know, we all know that if we keep visualizing things in our life, they tend to happen. And we're particularly, unfortunately, often visualizing bad things like our oh, more bills coming in the mail and that's all we talk yes. about. And it seems to self-perpetuate bad things. But mm-hmm. when we actually are aware of this power, mm-hmm. we can mm-hmm. utilize to create great things in our life. And I used to visualize pain-free, drug-free, back to maximum energy. And I'd visualize it. I'd indulge in that thought. I'd picture myself having a a wonderful life. I pictured children and I wrote down and I have all my clients who follow my program write down and visualize all the reasons that they want to get well. And it's for all of these reasons. And the reasons when they're listed are things they can picture in their mind. And if you obsess on them, we have this, we know in like inside us intuitively that we have this power and that life is like that. And so an experiment that confirms it with the electron movement just, yes. makes, it, just makes it feel very concrete. And that absolutely mm-hmm. you, you, you then really pursued that. Can I just say one dispute as you're about to like talk about now, the writing of the book and working with Dr. Tiller, and then we'll get on to your um, on, on to your um, implementable tips here. All of, but all of this stuff is very valuable for, mm-hmm. for folks. Um, I loved how Dr. Tiller said he'll work with you, but only if you promise to meditate every day. That just gave me yeah. goosebumps. That gave me goosebumps. You know, so, so here we are, you know. And, and by the way, you you mentioned uh, that people don't know their power. Um, it's because science was is very irrational. And I called Rene Descartes. Descartes is very alive in our world today. He put together this rational science, okay? Um, and I called him the homo dubitat, the skeptical man. We're homo sapiens and we're homo dubitat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, yes, and, and, and so uh, he's still very much alive in us. And so we, when I met Tiller, he is immense scientist. When I met him in Scottsdale, here's was the thing that really blew me away. First of all, he took a long time to answer my emails. It was his long sounds, but I was very persistent. I knew in my heart, he has something about the truth. I need to find out what this is. So here he agreed to meet with me finally. And while we're having dinner, it, it's the, the memory of that is like it happened yesterday. Four hours. We were together for four hours. I was actually quite terrified to meet him. Actually, oh yeah, I was, mm. what do you ask somebody? You know, to me, he was like, I'm meeting the rock star of science. Mm. <laughs> I was meeting like the rock star of science. What would you ask Einstein? Right. So what would you ask Darwin? I mean, you're going to meet somebody like, to me, he was like that. And, um, I asked him one singular question. That's for me, nailed it. And I said, do you know A Course in Miracles? I was a student of A Course at that time. And there's something about his physics model that if you're inner developed, if you're high in consciousness, your intention takes on a whole new power. You can manifest things very, very quickly. So I'm telling him, and I thought I was showing off a bit. I thought, hey, do you know A Course in Miracles? Then he said something that I thought, oh my gosh, okay. Helen Shuckman is a scribe of A Course in Miracles. And A Course in Miracles is one of the most classic, modern, 
spiritual texts of our time. Helen Shuckman is a prof- or was a professor of psychology at Columbia, a scientist herself, also a scribe. And she had brought the original manuscript of A Course in Miracles to Dr. Tiller. Can you believe it? He had actually been one of the original readers and she invited him to found the Foundation for Inner Peace. And he said, you know, I'd rather continue my work at Stanford. So uh, that was phenomenal. And I realized here's somebody who knows spirituality is handling one of the most important textbooks and also doing physics. He has both. If I can say, Tiller was like a sage who happened to know mathematics. <laughs> he yeah. had both worlds. And so, but he told me, no, I, I don't think you should really, you, you belong at the Mayo Clinic. He actually refused to work with me. But three months later, he called me out of the blue with most important phone call. And he said, before I agree to work with you, you must promise me one thing. Will you meditate every day? I mean, come on. Come on. That's okay, just look, amazing. look, Clint, to put it into perspective, you know, I put applications to med school, applied to do this, Stanford. Not one time has any institution, any place said, do you meditate? In future, we should even ask our presidents, do you meditate every day? Because we want a commander in chief who can be not only making the right decisions, yeah. but bring a holism in his own mindset, that there is a kind of stillness. So we need to look at our own selves in medicine, in every industry. And now, you know, mindfulness is a huge thing. Thank goodness. We're getting our priorities suddenly right side up slowly. And this virus pandemic has speeded things up for us. So Tiller, when he said that, I knew I had my mentor. And the next day, I actually went to my chairman at Mayo and said, I really need to do this. I need to go to Scottsdale, Arizona. And I packed up in the middle of winter my Jeep and drove for one and a half days nonstop to arrive in Scottsdale. (laughs) The apartment, I had an airbed. You know, it was so incredible. I look back and I was so brave. I, I just had no, no reservations. I told you, I was in pursuit of the truth. Every Thursday, we would meet. Every, it was called actually Thursdays with Tiller. Every Thursday, just him and I, and I would put a flip camera and put it on a stack of uh, physics books and record everything. And we would have a dialogue. And, and the first thing he said was, you need to learn the laws of thermodynamics. Law, L-A-W, means it's the law. And so he approached... Uh, his investigation of how human intention is lawful in our universe by applying it to, by really looking at thermodynamics, very wise. This is the law. It's not theory. It's not quantum theory. It's not cosmology. But thermodynamics plays out whether you're in the space station whether you're on the moon and boiling a cup of tea there or you're on planet Earth, it plays out. So thermodynamics is very important. I won't go into it, but we're going to now go into the tools. Yeah, yeah I think the before tools, you do. Uh, yeah, yeah, not, yeah not, go ahead. Not, not to delay curious. things anymore because I'm sure we've wet the appetite enough of people. Um, but, but what I wanted to, to, just to emphasize is what an interruption to the trajectory of your career path to suddenly say, look, I've met someone who I think is such an ex- extraordinary human being who mm-hmm. has a mentor capacity like no one else I've ever seen. And I'm just going to stop what I'm doing. And I'm just going to go and become an understudy and become humble and just start from scratch with my learning all over again. And that's what you did. And then the book that you wrote, is like all that you were able to learn and 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 and, and summarize to folks uh, like myself who just want to gain from the book the uh, sort of the the breakdown the summary of what you experienced. Absolutely, you know. So 
what, what the book and what I learned was that science is incredible. It is a pathway to knowledge, but so is spirituality. They're complementary. Mm-hmm. And there's a gap in those two, scientific and spiritual. What I wanted to do, my intention here, and what Tiller had said all those years ago was, you must meditate. And Nisha, you don't need to repeat my experiments, but if you can communicate a little bit of my physics for your colleagues in medicine, yeah. then I think you can help. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know what he meant, but now here we are a decade later and I'm thinking, holy shucks. So the book is very simple. <laughs> the book is very basic and it was done that way intentionally so that you can build the ideas. There's seven pillars. You can go build your knowledge to history of science, where we are and why we're here. We must respect that process. And then look at consciousness, where we are there. And I'm saying it's not the brain. We look at thermodynamics, the basic pieces of it, the amazing science of thermodynamics, where it plays out every day. The way I'm talking to you, my glass of water, my coffee cup is cooling down. It's all thermodynamics. The fact that I can move my arm and wave at you, Clint, thermodynamics, chemical potentials. So then we go to pillar four, his target experiments, where intention plays an immense role. I'm I'm wagging my finger. I apologize, but I know it. I saw the data. I didn't believe it. I'm the most homo dubitat of them all. I told you, I am a scientific mind. And then he turned my intention to, to what I was seeing. And it all came back. My life in Kenya the spiritual milieu that he was doing that with reverence, that science is a way to self-knowledge. Ask the right questions, investigate with authenticity, you'll be led there. There are 10,000 pathways to self-knowledge, prayer, intention, understanding who you are and what you are. Why not science? Why not ask that question properly? You know, I actually challenged him one Thursday. I said, science cannot get to the hard problem of consciousness and all this. You're talking thermodynamics. It's such an old science. Forget about it. <laughs> you know, I, I was really, and he's very kind. He's very sweet. And he looked at me, listen, total silence. And then he did this. He took off his glasses and pointed them. And he says, you know, science is a way to self-knowledge. Just that sentence. Science is also a way to self-knowledge. What does self-knowledge mean? Know thyself, Master Jesus is teaching. Know yourself. Know your questions. Because science is a way. We're just at this rung. We're now ready for the next rung. Mm -hmm. Beyond electromagnetism, which is beyond the speed of light. Those are our benchmarks right now. We just are at the epoch of finding new tools. Mm -hmm. No germs existed until we had a microscope. We didn't know Jupiter existed until we had a telescope. We didn't know that there are things beyond the speed of light until we get there, okay? And consciousness is way faster. So we have to look at these definitions and revisit them and question them. Question them, okay? So now let's go to the tools, Clint, because... For um, the readers of Bridging Science and Spirit, I pulled out some of the seminal lessons. And one of the first things is the first reality that we face with every day when we get up is atom molecule. I am a bag of atoms and molecules. I am that immediately. I brush my teeth and I have my coffee. Okay. I want to fuel my brain cells. So first things first. Okay, and I realized that we have to pay attention to the body's defense systems in this milieu that we find ourselves in. And I put together some of those tools, first things first, to really boost and increase the vitality of your immune system, which is based on certain supplements and botanicals. They are there. We know the science. It's it will help you. So some of the things I'll I'll say them out now is vitamin C. 
vitamin C, at least a thousand milligrams. If you can get natural vitamin C, even better. If you can't, just take some vitamin C emergency. Those packets you see in the drugstore, they're good. Okay, they have minerals and vitamin C. At least a thousand milligrams. So this is the first things first you can do to immediately boost your T cells and your B cells of the immune system surveillance. Okay? And then vitamin D, we're all deficient, Clint. You can be in a sunny climate, and we have studied this, we are deficient. So I advise at least 10,000 international units of vitamin D right away. The other mineral, zinc, 200 milligrams. If you want natural sources, pumpkin seeds. These are very good sources of zinc. Selenium, 200 micrograms, not milligrams, micrograms, okay? Brazil nuts, very good. So if you have a handful of Brazil nuts, a handful of pumpkin seeds, don't eat too much. You don't want to have too many calories, too much energy, I suppose. But really the natural sources of vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc, selenium, turmeric. Turmeric is wonderful, but here's the thing. Turmeric is not um, easily soluble, okay? It's a lipid-soluble uh, botanical or plant. And therefore, when you look for supplements of turmeric, look for lipid-soluble ones and look for standardized versions. It will say standardized on the bottle, okay? The other things I often talk about first things first is uh, ginger tea. Ginger is wonderful immune booster. And I also use Tulsi. Tulsi is holy basil. Mm. This is again an homage to my bringing up in Kenya. We had Tulsi plant and we used to drink tea mm. from the Tulsi plant. And guess what? Trader Joe's has it. <laughs> <laughs> Trader Joe's has tea bags of Tulsi. It'll say Tulsi and holy basil. So you have these. Then we come to the first things first that we are hearing about from the CDC. Wash your hands. Why? Because this virus is an RNA virus. It has a lipid shell. And when you use just basic soap and water, it dissolves it, makes mm -hmm. it inactive. That's why hand washing is so important. You don't need fancy, fancy soaps. Just hand wash with soap, okay? You don't need antibacterials and sanitizers and all these things that people are so worried about. Just wash your hands and wash it nicely, 20 seconds, you know? I'm... The other thing, don't drink cold foods. The virus cannot survive in warm things. So if you want to drink hot water, hot tea, those are good things, mm. okay? So the CDC is right. And then the social distancing, we can do FaceTime. Those are first things first. Vitamin C. And if you, if you are feeling a little bit sniffly, increase it. 2,000, 3,000 milligrams. It's not harmful. Believe me, not harmful. You might get a little loose stools. Fine. Okay, it's okay. But have it in your diet and in your supplements. I, I just took two grams just before I got on the show. I take lipophilic vitamin C. Always stocked up, okay? You know I what? That in international units of vitamin D, and I have my Brazil nuts. Really, I have them there. You were about to say something, Clint. Uh, you and I have not spoken about this, but I just did a video on lipospheric vitamin C that I just shared yeah. with everyone. Um, so you know, we're thinking exactly the same things here. And as I yeah. said, we have not talked about vitamin C at all. So we're really connecting here um, on what's really, really important, not just with the virus around. But because the studies show uh, yeah. that people with inflammatory arthritis are deficient on these antioxidants that are so crucial yes. for our defense system. Yes. Um, and why, why do we say lipospheric? You know, this is vitamin C that is a nanoparticle of lipids. So it's absorbed very quickly. And, it, and I can feel it, you know. Oh. <laughs> Me too. I get a, a little bit of a head spin, like a, just a fraction of a, like, a, oh, I feel it in my blood, you know. Oh, yes. I, yeah. And so if I feel even, even fatigued, I take more vitamin C. I just take it. And I think it's not a micronutrient. I think we have it backwards. And this is where I would disagree with the USDA recommendations. I would say it's a macronutrient, not micro. We don't need 500 milligrams. We need grams of this mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a thousand milligrams is one gram, but increase it. 
And uh, last time I looked on Amazon, the Lipospheric uh, brand I live on was sold out, but there, I think they're ramping up production. There are many other brands. You can take it, just experiment in your life, yeah. uh, but take some, take some, please. I even say to people, gummy bears, fizzy tablets, take your vitamins, please. <laughs> Beautiful. My kids love those ones. Um, Okay. Awesome. We could talk about these uh, first things first forever. There's so much we could cover, but please, I I know we both agreed that we wanted to limit this uh, through to uh, a certain time limit. Um, We've got about nine or 10 minutes left here. Get on, see if you can please cover the next two of your five um, fundamentals. So we have first things first, the next level to pump up the supplements you're doing, don't leave it at the supplements and hand washing. You want to now get super immunity. Super immunity means you're going to pump energy and the energy is actually the acupuncture system is your connect, is your battery. Think of it as your battery pumping your immune system, pumping your nerves, your muscles, your heart, your brain cells. And that's Tai Chi. It can be yoga. Okay. Once you do even a simple practice of Tai Chi and Qigong, you can go to YouTube. I do Spring Forest Qigong. And once you start even five minutes, you're starting to warm up and your acupuncture system absolutely snaps into attention. Here's another thing I often do. It's not in the book, but if I am, um, it's like a spiritual first aid. I actually thump my thymus. The acupuncture system is just behind the thymus gland in your sternum. Just thump it mm. and go, ha, ha, ha. Yes. And you snap, your, your acupuncture system resets itself very quickly. So you yeah. got your battery charging. So please do first things first and then pump up your subtle energy pump. You have many resources out there, okay? But use it, Ex- explore it. Just go onto YouTube and do fundamental Tai Chi. For people with arthritis, Fortunately, the Arthritis Foundation has the Paul Lamb uh, program for people with arthritis. You just go to arthritis.org uh, and you can just go Tai Chi and you'll be able to get videos and how to do simple Tai Chi. You can even do chair Tai Chi. If you're not able to stand, if you're, not, if you're worried, just be in your bed like you, Clint, and start doing, move, move your arms in the white cloud movement. And I can tell you, this will actually pump up your whole system. We think of just the arms, but it's your whole system that starts to move. Just like you're visualizing, you you can close your eyes. You can really move from your toes to the hair follicles to back and forth, okay? Mm -hmm. You have the capacity, but start becoming familiar with those energy systems and how they feel inside of you, okay? Mm -hmm. Become, yeah, become Mm -hmm. sensitive to that. But there's a third level, you know, so first things first, subtle energy pump. But the really amazing part is what we're talking with the gas discharge. Your intention is a powerful source of energy and information. Here's what I tell my patients. Take your supplement, put them in your left hand and hold an intention over it. Hold an intention, cover it with your right hand, and for about a minute, just intend that this medicine's energy and information contained in it will be effortlessly assimilated by my body. May it be so. It's like a prayer almost. But that that intention, that information, already you have a different potential of the, of the supplement, okay? You're holding it. You don't you can even hold it, you know, in front on your table and say, I intend that my energy pumps this up. Why not? Okay. Yeah, we, we, yeah I, I love it. What you know, the question I have to that is not whether or not that works. It's do you think that it works because you are empowering through your energetic thoughts the the, the supplements, or because in the process of thinking about that benefit that you've therefore gaining the benefit? I think it's both. Your subtle energy is called into uh, usefulness. Now you are directing your power very specifically out there to a target. The target is your vitamin C. 
It's your food. It's your water. You are saying, I am not separate from this. I am going to use my intention to power up for beneficial purposes. And you can do this with medicines too. A lot of people get fearful about methotrexate and steroids and I actually teach them this. So, and, and, and I'll tell you one thing, um, if I can share a story, uh, when I left Arizona, I mean, when I left uh, Mayo Clinic, I initially did a, a short sabbatical for six months and then I came back wrapped up and then I really moved away. And in that time, when I was leaving for my sabbatical, I had a patient, she has rheumatoid arthritis and she was very concerned about her medicines. But I told her, do one thing, at least do your Tai Chi. I've given you the thermodynamic pump. But what I understand about Tiller's work is that when you do Tai Chi, it will keep all your immune system you know, in harmony um, and will help you. She is a lawyer, actually. And so when I came back, she was one of the first people who was in my clinic. And she was a different person. She says, this Tai Chi has been such a gift. But it's the second thing that, that really alerted me. She said, Dr. Manick, I discovered something. Yes, I said, what, what, did you, what did you discover? And she said, when I take my methotrexate, initially I used to feel a bit of nausea and fatigue for about a day after my dose. But I found that if I take my methotrexate and, and I hold it in my left hand and I just close my eyes for a few moments and I keep my hand over it, I don't have those effects. What do you think? I called Tiller and he said, oh, that makes total sense because you're receiving and the body has polarities. When you put your medicine in your left hand, it's the receiving hand and your right hand gives it. So you are connecting the dots inside yourself and that methotrexate has a different potential now. You have made it different. You can have a belief about it, but she, I can tell you, discovered this on her own. And made the made that and and I said absolutely, keep taking your methotrexate and it was later on she even made more connections through her tai chi practice so she became open to more information but she was empowered you know she discovered things on her own connected the dots and the most important thing Clint was she lost the fear of medications, which she needed. Her body needed that to be harmonized. She powered it up with her Tai Chi practice. Then she powered it further with her intention. And it was her own discoveries. So she taught me a lot. And now she changed me as a physician, you know, as a rheumatologist. I say, okay, let's do the first things first. What medicines, what supplements do you need? I, I prescribe Tai Chi routinely. I actually mm -hmm. teach them. I teach them mindfulness. Sometimes if they have a very busy mind, we just go into breath work. Breathe in, hold, breathe out. Hold, breathe in, hold. We just practice that for five minutes. I just say, switch on the light. I mean, switch off the light in my room, in my office. And we just go through. And I can't tell you how many times patients just relax and just be there in the space of silence, breathing in, and breathing out, just even go there. That's a very mm -hmm. basic, that's setting your intention. Mm -hmm. I and love it. Very, I yeah, love it. yep. it's the silence of it. So there you have first things first, smart bodies and subtle energies, intention matters. Mm -hmm. And there are a couple yeah. more, and I don't know what they are because I haven't seen them yet, but you yeah. have these free available on your website. Uh, you just have yeah, to jump on your mailing list, correct? Right. They will be posted as blog posts so you can download, you know, you can, yeah. it's free. You can, you don't even need to buy the book. I just want people to know that you can have a system in place for the long run. Yeah. Make yeah. a system because it's the system that will support you. Whatever happens out there. Okay. Yeah. Hold on. Whatever happens in, in the world, you are ready and poised, whether it's your first things first, then you can change that, but you got your Tai Chi practice. You can do it in the airline, in the bathroom, you're doing it. But your intention, your prayerful, you're, you're just silent for five minutes. You're powerful. You can do this. And then you, you can build on that program. It's the program 
not a single thing. You have to do all of those levels and they will serve you well for life. And this is what we should be teaching our children. Good habits, eating, supplements, teaching them good energetic practices. I bet you ADD will be a history thing, you know? We need to teach them Qigong and Tai Chi in our classrooms. Then holding intention that you are powerful, showing them the evidence, and then building that, you know? So we have a new generation of people who are really uh, powerful and for, we're not homo dubitat anymore. We're, we're becoming self empowered homo spiritus. Yeah, it'd be beautiful, wouldn't it? I just <laughs> homo think- universalis, brotherhood of man, right? <laughs> My children today, I was just thinking about what they've done so far. Um, so this morning, my uh, my wife and her mum were watching a global meditation broadcast live by Saint Rajinda Singh, um, uh, and they were sitting. and uh, Although they didn't meditate, you know, they're aware that we like and sort of engage in meditation on a regular basis. And yes. yesterday afternoon, I was doing my Wim Hof breathing, um, and in came my three year old, and uh, I turn around and she's like, she's holding her breath. Because she's she's listening to the video, but she didn't do all the breath work. But she didn't do the, the the prior work, so she only held her breath for about ten seconds. But I'm like, you know, they, they should, they'll pick up on these habits and these things that we do as adults. They really, they 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 do learn and they're influenced and they they copycats the kids. They'll do what the parents do. So oh, if yes. we can do these things, we can influence our next generation to to be, as you said, all of these, uh, you know, more mindfulness, more ability to as you've put as the title to bridge the science and the spirit, which which is great. Yeah, you know, you reminded me of this global prayer that, um, and and I called it the granny effect, uh, that the grandmother and her church group are immensely powerful healers. And in fact, experts have said that. The reference I used in the book was a paper, a round table around how do we investigate subtle energies And one of the things that these experts said that there's no question that when you have a grandmother in her church group praying for somebody in a hospital, we can't do such a trial because it mucks up the result. (laughs) And I thought, bingo, even the experts agree the grandmother in her church group is having immense effects. How does that effect happen? And that's where we also need to go. And I call it the field effect. Okay, we are creating spaces. It's humans create great field effects. It's not just your atoms and electrons, which have field effects. We, your field effect and my field effect actually are interacting right now, even though you're in Florida and I'm in California. Subtle energies have very different rules, okay? It's a field effect. So all these global prayers, hallelujah, yeah. keep doing them. Yeah. Yeah. It does work. There's no yeah. question we should be doing that. It's like when uh, in the Bible it says wonderful things or great or amazing, remarkable things happen when two or, me, two or more people come together in my name, right? Yes, and exactly. it's almost like it's like, the, uh, it's like a wave that then has a synchronicity with another wave and the wave then builds into higher peaks and troughs, right? So Yeah, you, you reminded me of St. Matthew, but, but here's the thing. When Tiller was doing his intention experiments, he did say one very important thing. Link up with the divine as you understand him or her to be. So when we are doing these global prayers, we're linking us, ourselves, Mm -hmm. with the great absolute Mm -hmm. love field and saying, we are one. Mm -hmm. How beautiful is that? I, I mean, I'm just pumped up thinking about it. (laughs) <laughs> oh, me too. Me too. Well, I'm w- one thing uh, over and above everything that you've shared with us, I'm sure that people are just so enlivened and refreshed to know that someone who works in the field of rheumatology has <laughs> such an extraordinary more to offer to the world over and above what you're doing for your patients um, in, the, in the medical sort of side of things, but also yes. in the spiritual side of things. And um, I know we ran over your time uh, a little bit, and I'm very grateful that you shared everything with us today. All I can say is um, uh, go grab your book, um, folks, if you're listening, and this this touches or resonates with you, go grab uh, Dr. Manick's book, 
uh, read the book. Uh, I'm halfway through it, thoroughly enjoying it. Um, and subscribe to your mailing list because I've been receiving um, these um, tools from you and you get the tools on the mailing list and then you don't have to quickly go back on this podcast and take notes or go to the transcription. You right. can just yeah. get them and print them out and put them uh, in a binder or something. Um, so yes. let's finish off just by your uh, website address. It's Nisha Manek MD. So Nisha is N I S H A. M-A-N-E-K, nishamanikmd.com. And uh, there's lots of wonderful information there with Dr. Tiller and Lama Zopa Rinpoche, who's a heart disciple of His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. So we've done some very unique work uh, to show that consciousness is way, way beyond this little brain here. And so, uh, and once we know that, we're always connected to the great divine. It's a, uh, we're never alone. I think that's the basic message here, that we're never alone and that we have great helpers and angels on our side. And now we are becoming aware we can bridge science and our knowledge with the CDC and everything, the wonderful things that we're doing, and bridge it into with prayer. And um, I just want to say, Clint, you're such an amazing host. <laughs> you know, I can keep going, uh, but you you just absolutely, it's so much fun just to talk to you and, and uh, go, go in these wonderful, meaningful areas. There, The time has come. The time, the idea of intentions power is an idea whose time has come now, more urgently than ever before. Okay, so we're being speeded up. Mm -hmm. Yes. We're awakening. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you for reawakening me to all of these concepts, which had been dormant for a few years. And so I'm re really uh, grateful for that. Um, if, if you've enjoyed this podcast, whether you've watched it online or whether you've listened to this through your uh, phone or laptop, um, I'd love if you could go online and go to Rheumatoid Solutions Podcast and give us a five-star review of this episode. That'd be great. Uh, really uh, motivates me when I see... Uh, the positive feedback. And if you'd love to have Dr. Manic back and talk more about this, please leave some comments and uh, we, will, uh, we will enjoy having more discussions like this. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you very much, Dr. Manic. Hey, thank you, Clint. It's been so much fun. Thank you for starting my Sunday on a really high note. <laughs> my immune system's boosted up. <laughs> awesome.